Uh, but now it's time to bring in our next guest, and that's Rafael Zaguri, Chief Investment Officer at Swan Bitcoin. Welcome uh, to the show, Rafael. Thanks, Tom. Great to be here. Great to be back at Schwab Network. All right. Uh, so we're talking Bitcoin. This has been uh, the headline news uh, this week, hitting all-time highs. It's been a really volatile trade. Uh, I mean, do you look at the parabolic move that we're seeing, Raphael, and uh, see some substance behind it? Uh, because right now there's a bunch of different narratives out there, uh, whether they believe in this rally. Yeah, I think what we are seeing, Tom, is that this is the, the the realization by market participants that we we have a new savings technology that it's available for in the financial stage, and with any new asset, any nascent asset, right, it will bring volatility. So if you see any new tech stock, any new technology that came in, right, people realize the value of it. Volatility, I think, it's a feature of that and not not a bug. Uh, and Bitcoin is the, a new savings technology that it's coming up. And I think it's coming up for a total addressable market that includes other savings technologies like real estate, like gold, like silver. Bitcoin just surpassed the silver market cap, bond stocks, right? And this is a massive market and Bitcoin is still a tiny drop in the ocean of liquidity of all the assets out there. And as it happens, as more people realize that, uh, you are going to see some volatility through through the pricing, right? Yeah, and and Rafael, I think that's the um, you know the, the knock against Bitcoin a little bit uh, is that a lot of people don't understand uh, that it might be this asset class that's a store of value at this point, like gold, as you mentioned, like bonds. It maybe should be in people's portfolios. We have ETFs that have now been approved in our trading, so it makes it a, a little bit more comfortable for investors. But what would you tell? you know, traders and investors out there that, hey, this is here to stay and it is a viable asset class that maybe that should be in your portfolio. Yeah, I think looking at the volatility and thinking it's a, it, it, it's a bad thing, I think it's missing the whole picture. I think volatility in this case is a good thing. And I'll tell very few of our investors complain when, when they see volatility in most asset classes to the upside. They don't like volatility, of course, to the downside. But you know you don't take don't get one without the other. So if you are going to have a new asset and you are going to have an asset with a lot of upside potential, that's inherently going to have volatility for both sides, through the upside and to the downside. Now, if you just look on a historical perspective, right, and if you look at Bitcoin as an asset class and how it has performed compared to other asset classes, I think one of the best features is the lack of correlation that it actually has to you know all the major asset classes out there. And that's true if you compare it to stocks, bonds, right, you know, real estate, any other asset class. And on a portfolio perspective, and again, just purely looking at the historical perspective, it of course has its own flaws. It fits in a portfolio. There's no question about that. It's one of the assets that has the best sharp ratios that can ask for out there. You know, the Bitcoin sharp ratio is better than most of hedge fund managers that you see out there that people are paying. Two and twenty for to get you know the privilege of getting exposure to 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 those managers and here's an asset that you know it's trades twenty four seven there are no gates on it you know anybody can buy it and with the ETF coming in I think one of the issues that we had in previous cycles is that getting access to Bitcoin for a lot of people out there was a challenge they had to go out open an account on an exchange like Swan right and understand how to do that. And mm -hmm. I still think that, you know, owning Bitcoin in a self-custody way is the best way to do it. But the ETF uh, brings out a whole new set of investors that could come into Bitcoin. I, I use, you know, I, I say that up until the ETF, uh, getting into Bitcoin is like a concert that to get into the concert, you know, there was a very narrow door and only a few people can get in. And, you know, the stage was a small stage. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, not only we widen the doors, we knock the, the walls down and it, it's like we're moving from Carnegie Hall to a concert at, wall, at, at uh, the Central Park, right? Yeah. So a lot more people are going to come in and uh, this is, it, you know, I'm super excited to see what this next bull market is going to bring to, to Bitcoin because I think it's super different than the previous ones that we've seen. Yeah, uh, a little bit more conviction as a viable asset uh, out there. And you've seen, uh, you know, we talked about the volatility in here. Uh, if you look at the boost in liquidity that, you know, people and traders and investors have now with equity markets at or near all time highs, that's probably helping. The ETFs are definitely helping uh, spur demand here a little bit. Give our uh, viewers here a little breakdown on the halving, because uh, I think that's one of those uh, educational talking points 
that a lot of people don't get because it creates scarcity. And maybe that's why we're seeing uh, the parabolic move to the upside. But give our uh, viewers a breakdown here of having. Yeah, and I'll start because I think that's one of the key features on the monetary policy of Bitcoin, right? And Milton Friedman used to say that when you look at inflation, the, the biggest issue with inflation is not the, only the level of inflation, but it's uncertainty around inflation, right? If you know prices are going to go up by a certain percent, that it's exactly right every month, right? Then you can plan around, economic participants can plan around it. But it's when it's uncertain, in one year you have 2% inflation, the other one you have 10% inflation. You don't even know, you know if the inflation measures that you're using are the right ones or the good ones should really you know, uh, compare to what your, your, your purchasing power would be. That creates a massive issue for anybody setting prices and prices information at the end of the day. I think one of the, the most beautiful things of Bitcoin is that that monetary policy, it's not only known, it's written in code, right? We know exactly what is going to happen, you know exactly when it's going to happen, at what block height it's going to happen. Uh, and very, you know, we're, we're going to go through the halving now, which happens approximately every four years, uh, where the issuance of Bitcoin on new blocks that goes out to uh, to miners goes from 625 to 3118 Bitcoin per block. One block is found every 10 minutes on, on average, which just means that, again, the new issuance of Bitcoin is going to go down and the inflation rate uh, of Bitcoin is also going to go down, right? But I think, as I said, the most important piece here is not that inflation is going down. The block reward compared to what we have out there in terms of Bitcoin is already fairly small and it's going to be even smaller. But the fact that, you know, this is an asset that has been around for 15 years, the monetary policy of it has been tested, trialed. A lot of forks have happened on Bitcoin, right? And the monetary policy of Bitcoin has not changed and cannot be changed. I think it's the, the, it's the most important piece here. All right, Rafael, uh, real quick here before we let you go. What's next for Bitcoin? Uh, because uh, maybe some consolidations warranted after that uh, parabolic move. We're down just a little bit here. Is that what you're looking for? Or, uh, you know, do you have a price level that you're looking at? Yeah, um, I, after being Bitcoin for a long time, I can tell you that price prediction Bitcoin, as I said in the beginning, given it's a new asset, you know, and the, it is going to have volatility price predictions are usually going to be wrong. And mine is no different. If I make a price prediction, it's definitely going to be wrong. But what I can tell you is when we compare Bitcoin to all the assets I mentioned before, uh, the upside potential is gigantic. And I still feel, think that we're super, super, super early on this. It's a 1.4 trillion market cap compared to 320 trillion in real estate, right? 100 trillion in stocks. So if you just put that in perspective, even if there is a very low probability that Bitcoin is going to capture some of that monetary premium, it should already be trading, you know, at much higher levels than it is trading right now. Yep. Uh, I guess if uh, you, you can weather the volatility, trade with your big boy pants on, this is one for you and uh, maybe an asset class that's warranted at this point. All right. Great discussion, Rafael. Have a great day. Thank you. You too, Tom. All right. That's Rafael Zaguri, Chief Investment Officer at Swan Bitcoin.